the what's the shirt? That thing that looks dope. Yeah, man. So I rock this because black and yellow, you know, the Pittsburgh thing. Uh, this is actually one of my sponsors. It's Gear. Uh, it's a wrestling based company out of Texas, and they're into MMA and stuff. And then uh, hopefully they'll uh, have like a line of stuff for me for my fight. Um, but cool guys. Mo- I think they're all wrestlers that started the company, but it's it's pretty cool. Nice man, that's sick. I mean, we kind of we started to talk about it last week. So funny enough, I guess for people when you when you're listening to this, this is Lucas Siebert. He was a D1 wrestler at WVU, making a transition to MMA. We tried to do this podcast last week, and the internet just sabotaged us on all levels. Like my power went out first, so that killed my Wi-Fi on the live stream. So I I ruined it first. Then Lucas got in, and his internet was all spotty from that that Ohio country air didn't like the service apparently so we got him back now though and we got a clear connection so let's let's go dude so uh so with the internet on my end at immortal like it probably would work now because so there was a that when i was like there's a bunch of cops just went by my mom just texted me there's a shooting some dude was running through the highway in columbus blasting off shots just yeah so that's That's crazy I think that's why it was so spotty because that was only like a couple miles away from me. That's insane. So yeah, they were bringing out all the all the big guns to uh, deflect, and who knows what kind of interference that caused. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. But I gotta say, man, I've been since we first touched base. I've been looking forward to talking to you, man, on so many levels. Like we've we've texted about the WVU connection a lot, but yeah. I gotta start. I gotta start there, man. I mean, I was just back at one two three Pleasant Street. This past weekend for a show, one of my buddies from college, actually, who also went to WVU, was in a different band at the time. And I was friends with him all through college and have kept in touch since then. He's back now. He's signed to a major label. So shout out to the breathing process. It's actually a Pittsburgh based band. He just joined his vocals for them. So shout out to them and Chris Rabideau, man. It was awesome to see him back there at one, two, three. Did you ever get out to one, two, three? Were you a music I've, guy? I've been there in the fall um, just because like we're older and we're just like, um, we're not trying to do like the college thing, I guess. And, uh, I like the vibe of it. Like it was cool. I didn't expect it to be like super music and stuff, but I got in there. I was like, Whoa, this is, this is sick. I'm not a huge like metal head or even rock. I think they were playing a little bit less metal stuff, but I, I was, I was into it. I'll, I'll definitely stop in there now that no. I got a little bit more free time. Yeah, that's sick, dude. They get uh, they get all kinds of shows in there, you know, from bluegrass. I've seen like EDM shows there. They, I mean, there's literally any music under the sun they get in there. But I pretty much, you know, I'm a metalhead myself, but I like to get into anything too. Because when I was at WVU, I worked for the DA, and I was the arts and entertainment editor. So I would always cover shows at one, two, three, or the that's CAC cool. or wherever. So yeah, man. It's kind of, you know, as a nostalgia bomb for sure, being back in Morgantown and especially being at one, two, three. But I got to say, man, that's that city is so grown up now. Like it doesn't look at all like it did when I was in school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It, it changes every year. There's something new at WVU. Uh, one thing that doesn't change is there's potholes on the road at all times. Correct. Um, aside from that, like it, it's definitely grown since I, I mean, my freshman year. Yeah, what well, what's like your spot? What's your go to if it's a Friday night and you just want to get some good food and go out? Like, what's your spot in Morgantown? Deepy Dough, Deepy Dough. Um, I I mean, yeah, a calzone, but buffalo chicken calzone or barbecue if I'm feeling it. But I mean, for the most part, I'm not really going going out. That's that was more freshman freshman stuff for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I could tell you the last time I went out in Morgantown. Yeah, I, that was never my life either when I was there, honestly. I know WVU has that reputation and everything, and I know the opportunity was certainly there, but I, I'm like you, man. I was never super about that life, but hilarious that you said DP, though, because I swear, like, my roommate, who ended up being one of my best friends to this day, was the best man at my wedding. We I won't say we kept DP Doe in business because they were doing just fine, but we, we we spent more money than we should have at DP Doe while we were there. And it was always Buffalo chicken and barbecue chicken. Just yeah, like you yeah. said, those are the ones. Dude, yeah. Me and my, uh, my roommate actually from uh, the Pittsburgh area, Canaansburg, Tim, Tim Ritzko. We, we, 
we were always always at dp it was a it was a given because i used to live off a of high street i mean sometimes we just walk walk down there past all the all the junk kids and just slide into dp yeah dude yeah. one time one time we went to my roommate and i went to casa de amici with literally a jar of coins like we had this giant coin jar this is when we were freshmen and we walked down to casa and paid with coins and the cashier looked at us and goes are are you high and we're like we're like no we're not high we're just really poor like why are you yeah, questioning this? Like, we're, we're... <laughs> yeah that's uh, i mean that's kind of a dick move on your part but Hey, yeah. No, you know what though? It was one of it was one of those digital jars that like counted it for you as you put it in. So I was like, look at the like we're not lying. That's the number on it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah it was yeah. great, dude. I, I definitely it was nice to be back, but those days are behind me, unfortunately. And it's funny, like it sounds like you might be in that phase too, where like the college life isn't as appealing to you. You know, you mentioned you obviously already have sponsors for your MMA career, you had a successful wrestling career and you were a scholar, all American. It sounds like you're kind of past those days too. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I had, I had fun in college, but I mean, being a part of a wrestling program that, that's trying to build a good reputation, it was, for me, it was important to establish that we we're doing this. And, uh, I, I mean, I, like I said last time when I got on the team, we were definitely we had the WVU party rep. Um, and now we have the WVU reputation of we got, we got good wrestlers and tough people. Um, and like I said, again, last time, I, I think my GPA, my fall semester of college. So I wasn't a good, I wasn't a good high school academic guy, but my fall semester of college, I think my GPA was like a one seven maybe mm -hmm. like I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been allowed. And, and, uh, I, and Flynn, thank God, get, just kind of gave me another opportunity. He just saw something in me. And I, uh, I think, like you said, scholar, all American at one point, and I'm graduating, going to be a first generation graduate here in uh, May. So, I mean, life's good. That's sick, man. What was it about school at first that, you know, didn't appeal to you? And, and like you said last time, you didn't necessarily do well in high school either. But just talking to you, man, I can tell you're a smart dude. You're very perceptive. Like we said, you're kind of wise beyond your years. So what was the disconnect? Like what what did you have to connect in your mind to make it click and make it make sense? Well, uh, one, like I, I have a learning disability, kind of like a undiagnosed of, and uh, been like tested here and there. It's just kind of like really hard for me to retain stuff all, all flat math so don't i mean i i don't think you're gonna ask me during math but no. um, <laughs> yeah that's like that's my disconnect i would say and then uh when i was a freshman i was learning how to survive on my own i mean you got all this and luckily as a division one athlete um i would i wouldn't have made it through college if i wasn't a division one athlete because i got so many things offered to me as far as tutoring uh academic advisor uh just really blessed with the opportunity of like them setting me up and uh like i said there's no way i would have made it through college without without the wv wrestling team and and stuff like that for sure man if it makes you feel better i was actually i had a full ride to wvu's honors college when i got there and that quickly went away after like two years just because I did not care about school at all. So it's yeah. like I went the opposite direction of you. So definitely no shame in that, man. It's awesome that that you got there, though. And like you said, there was a lot of personal growth. The wrestling team and that program kind of help and center you and yeah. get you in a better place, man. A first generation graduate, too. You drop that kind of casually, man. But that's freaking awesome. Congrats. Yeah, that's probably I, I could win a UFC strap and uh, at my mom was going to have that diploma right in the right in the center of the family room over that. You know what I mean? Uh, that's uh, so cool. I'm definitely proud of that. Yeah, as you should be, man. That's killer. So you have this successful, you know, athletic career in college. But one thing we also kind of glossed over, we mentioned it last time, but we're going to pretend like that show never existed. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a walk on, though. I always thought that was interesting, too. Like you weren't this highly recruited, highly touted wrestler, man. You worked for everything you got at WVU. 
Yeah, man. Uh, I was uh, so. Let's see what angle I want to come at this with is uh like I was kind of like a I was a good wrestler in high school. Uh, cut a lot of weight. I think that was a a big detriment for my success in high school. Uh, two time state alternate, so the a match away. Senior year, I made it. Had tons of energy or injuries. Tough weight class. Went on two at the state tournament, and uh, my coach from high school, David Grant, believed in me. Thought I could uh, do it at the D one level, and I did too. I walked on at WVU. Luckily, got in state tuition with my major, uh, sports psychology, and um, I I just grinded, man. I mean walked on uh and then uh, i mean i wasn't i was probably didn't get a takedown in the room for a while uh, i was definitely the worst lightweight there and then as you just see kids get distracted by the college lifestyle i eventually my sophomore year i was the starter out of nowhere true sophomore year i was the starter oh, out of nowhere. awesome i actually got to start a match my freshman year because uh it was an injury or something. Somebody missed weight, and I wrestled against Pitt. I actually wrestled a. It was it was Mickey Phillippe. It was like he was like number five dude in the country, and I was eighteen years old. One nice. time qualifier uh, went out there in Pittsburgh, and I was like, "Geez, man, it's a different level." That's what that's what happens, man. At that level, my cousin Dustin Conti wrestled at Clarion. And he had to wrestle Ed Ruth early in his college career when Ed was like on top of the world. I mean, Ed was, you know, one of the best for as long as he was in college, but he drew Ed Ruth like early in his college career and uh, just got murdered. And my cousin's obviously a beast, you know, another D1 wrestler. But it's like you said, it's a different level when you first get in there, man. I mean, it's it's insane, man. And it's funny. Every Division One wrestler has a story. They're like wrestled in. They're like, yeah, I remember the first. For me, I remember the first time I wrestled at Oklahoma State. And, I mean, that's my style. I'm outside sh- shots, all that stuff. I look over. I just got thrown to my back. I, period ends, whatever. John Smith's in the corner yelling yeah. to the other guy. And I'm like, I remember looking over and being like, what? Are you <laughs> this is happening. This is like, happening. This is happening. All the Oklahoma State cheerleaders on the on the floor. It's crazy crazy packed and i was like wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did it feel though like did did you like it or was it kind of intimidating or what like how did your body respond to that energy um I, I mean just in general like i just wasn't on the level and i i guess i never really got the opportunity once i feel like i stepped up my wrestling level uh mm. so i was just kind of i was kind of out outmatched and and but i i always went out and gave it my all my sophomore year was the only year i started the whole time and then uh last year just dealt with a lot of injuries and stuff and then this year it was just like i could never get on the mat it was all thing after thing and uh but i it i will say i handled it well but Oklahoma State's a little intimidating. Luckily, I never had to wrestle against Iowa because that's the <laughs> that's the one where it's like, yeah, dude, they're yelling at you. Yeah, they're telling you you're a terrible person. You're just like, yeah. right. Famously brutal environment, but I mean, you're gonna have in MMA. You know, you might have plenty of that too. The the oh, yeah, shows. Sure. Have you been to well, local MMA shows? Like, were you a big MMA fan before your wrestling career? Or when did you kind of get so, in? I mean, when I was a kid. I grew up watching the ultimate fighter with my dad. That's, I mean, that's how I got into it. Nice. Uh, And then I've never actually been to a local show. I mean, most of them are in Columbus and I'm always in, in school uh, focusing on wrestling and stuff. So, Uh, but my buddy's got a show in Kentucky. I'm not sure what promotion it's for, but uh, he's a six and one amateur. His name's Josh Pereira. Nice. I want to get him him fight for you guys once he he turns pro a little bit um yeah he's training with him he's another immortal guy so yeah man we're down we love the immortal crew i was actually talking to rick there a little yeah. bit we're trying to you know get a whole crew of you guys out to our events i mean that's what we love to work with good gyms obviously like immortals as good as it gets the reputation there's amazing so it's cool that you linked up with them was that kind of the easy choice for you being back home or was there something more that you liked about it 
Uh, so the whole immortal thing came. Uh, so my sophomore year, uh, got out of big 12s and then, uh, was waiting to see if I got an NCAA bid didn't, and then didn't matter because COVID happened. Uh, mm. and then I was stuck training at home and the high school was closed. There was nothing to do. And I always wanted to, wanted to try mixed martial arts. I always grew up watching it and stuff and I, I went in to Immortal when it opened in May and luckily Matt didn't care about COVID so <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Matt ran a group of 10 maybe fighters and in that group man yeah I think maybe one or two fell off but everybody else is just very successful I met Josh Pereira when he was 0-1 and, and now he's 6-1 and and it's all from immortal man. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. that's that's a common theme I think that we see with amateur fighters is they'll take a loss super early, either in their debut, second fight, something like that. But you can immediately tell the ones that are about the fight life, they'll bounce back, like like Josh obviously did, rattled off six straight wins. But some guys get that first loss and just think like, ah, this isn't for me or whatever, and and call it a day. Like we see so many fighters that fight once and never fight again, but when you're in a crew with Immortal, I'm sure you get you see that they tell you that all the time. Like, man, it happens, especially as an amateur. It happens. Like, one loss isn't the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely have great mentors with Immortal. Uh, obviously, the coaches and stuff. But like, I mean, the all the guys are older than me for the most part. I mean, I've been hanging around there for the past two years, three almost now. And like, I mean, I always keep in contact with them. And then now I'm back. I'm I'm excited to represent Immortal. Hell yeah, dude. How did the connection first start? Because the way we first heard that you wanted to fight was Sucker Punch reached out to us. Like, how did you get hooked up with them? Because that's that's pretty uncommon for a debuting amateur to have a management team like Sucker Punch, you know, one of the best in the world, some of the biggest fighters in the world fighting under their name. So it was kind of unusual when they reached out with a debut amateur fighter like you. How'd that all come come to be? So uh, it, do you follow WV Wrestling at all? Like uh, A little uh, bit. You, so Killian. You school me on it. Yeah, go ahead. Killian Cardinal is a returning All-American. He's my roommate. Uh Sucker Punch reached out to him because they, they're from around the same area. And uh, they were wondering if he was doing MMA. And he was like, I'm not sure about it. I'm going to do another year of wrestling. But my roommate uh, trains MMA and would love to do it. So he sent me the stuff, and I signed with them within three days. Honestly, didn't know they were that that big. Like, I didn't know much <laughs> about the the. I guess politics of, sure. of MMA and uh, yeah, man. And uh, sucker punch to reach out to you. Obviously I wanted to fight for two, four, seven, one, because uh, I mean, you guys probably get hated on for your amateur rules a lot, but I think my yeah. mom likes them. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. I love yeah. that. So uh, I wanted to, I wanted to fight for them. And then obviously uh, oh, our, biggest connection between me and you is probably ethan hayes uh yeah but yeah he's uh, ethan's probably my like biggest mentor in the game as far as especially in the west virginia area uh he drives me up to pittsburgh i train at scout a little bit tra train at commas gym and uh always have ethan around and he was like yeah dude i think that would be a good one for you to get signed up with i can uh, put you on and then i reached out to my manager and then now we're here man that's sick, dude. Well, thanks, Ethan, for that connection for sure, man, because we're definitely happy to happy to have you um, without announcing too much. You know, we can't say too much about your debut. Obviously, nothing's signed yet, man, but we're happy yeah. to have you. And it'll be one of our upcoming shows. We can say that much that we're going to get you on there, get get your feet wet, get that debut action going, man. It's going to be a freaking blast. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I cannot cannot wait to finally do it. I've been training a long time. Uh, I mean, I just got got out of Immortal. I had a tough practice with uh, Mark Coleman and, and Josh. I just had a 15-minute fight. <laughs> so I think I, I'm ready. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No big like, deal. Nothing like uh, the hammer screaming at you, man. That's, that's an intimidating guy. 
Dude, that's kind of surreal. Like an amateur debut in their training, and you've got freaking Mark Coleman, one of the most legendary guys of all time in MMA. Yeah, shouting dude, I'm, at you. I'm not gonna lie. Like the first time he walked into the gym, I was with my brother. Who's he, you'll meet him. He's gonna be in my corner. Him and Josh. Um, and uh, he was like, he was like, dude, is that Mark Coleman? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> and then, uh, that was two years ago. And ever since, like, I grew up, I have it surprised somewhere here in my house uh i had a mark coleman little ufc action figure i mean i grew up loving mma mark coleman was my favorite my dad's favorite fighter and, and now he's yelling at me and sometimes i have those those like john smith moments where i look over and I'm like, what in the hell is going on that's madness and that's yeah. you know that's to say nothing of matt brown as well as you know in my yeah. opinion I've been a huge Matt Brown guy my whole life, man. Ever since he was on the Ultimate Fighter, I rooted for that guy. I just love his attitude, love everything about him. Was he loves metal, dude? You guys get along. Oh, I know. Like we've we've <laughs> talked about. It. I met him in a uh, in Vegas before, actually, when I was working for Flow Combat, and we were on the road trip. Went out and got some dinner and watched a UFC card with Matt. And we talked about metal a lot. And he's uh he's seen some of my guitar videos on Twitter and stuff and responded. So one day I, I definitely want to jam with Matt Brown someday though. That's a goal. Yeah, he definitely plays plays guitar and stuff i mean he's a he is the epitome of like a oh just a warrior i mean is that metal is what calms him yeah yeah and that's like, i mean that's the case yeah yeah he's like ah man i'm not gonna lie i'm not a big metal head when he plays the metal at the gym i'm like i i agree <laughs> He what are you gonna do play. about it? You know, what are you yeah. gonna do about it? Yeah, Matt no, Brown wants to. No, yeah. like, Matt, we gotta change this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did, have you seen the clip of him on the Ultimate Fighter when Forrest is yelling at him to unleash the animal? Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. How do you guys do? You guys like raz him for that at the gym? That's like one of the most classic Ultimate Fighter moments ever. Like it's hilarious. You know what's funny is he has an Ultimate Fighter like clip of somebody put like lime juice in his his like dip or something like that and uh i remember that from when i was a kid that's awesome and i remember meeting matt and being like this is a dude from tv the crazy dude from tv <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing man yeah. wow he's yeah got, i mean he's got a ufc fight uh at the end of the month so i think yeah. i saw that but who's it against again i forget the opponent or barina maybe oh that's nice the right way i'm not 100 percent sure it's in columbus uh it's only three hours away from Pittsburgh, so yeah, it is Ke uh, Brian Barberina. Yeah, dude, yeah, that's sick. Go, go out and support Matt Brown, you know. Nice, and that's in Columbus, you said. Yep. Nice, Curtis Blades yeah. and Chris Dawkins atop the car. That's a that's solid, Icar, man. Icar France is on it too, I believe. No, yeah, he is against Asker Askarov. Nice, dude. That's a good card. That's sick. Yeah, they, they rebooked it from two years ago when COVID happened because I got mm. I got sick. My birthday is like a couple days ago and like my uh my birthday present two years ago was to go to the ufc fights and then that's awesome it got canceled but ah uh, that yeah. sucks man but yeah run it back with matt on the card that's freaking huge yeah yeah man it's it's awesome so what was i mean this is always the question for any wrestler transitioning to mma but what was the process like for you kind of a lot of wrestling habits don't work so well in mma some of them work extremely well in mma like what was your transition like specifically so for me, without going into too much technical detail for my opponent who's going to be watching, <laughs> uh, I grew up, uh, my favorite fighter was TJ Dillashaw. Mm -hmm. And luckily he's a wrestler, but he's also a fantastic striker. And I kind of just transitioned off of that. And then the more, the more I get into the game, the more I just love watching, watching high-level strikers and stuff starting to fall in love with striking but obviously don't want to be the wrestler that wants to go in there and strike and then gets his ass kicked so learning the, the balance in, mm -hmm. in everything is is probably yep. the most important thing and luckily i have matt the king of clinch you know what i mean like he's the the best guy for clinch in uh all of mma in my opinion and then we got the the godfather ground and pound and mark coleman so i mean we're i like to call him the grandfather ground and pound now but oh getting cocky <laughs> already man yeah. no, mark, <laughs> mark, man man i blessed with these coaches uh and just everything that's that i got here 
Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, and that makes a lot of sense on your transition. Like what was, like you said, without going into too much technical detail, but what was kind of the biggest hurdle for you when you started? Was it the stand up? Was it jujitsu? Like what was your hardest transition? So I have long arms. So the striking and stuff was works for me and just, a little bit. I, I guess it was just the speed of it. So I'd go against mm. like guys like Pereira, like Josh, and he's just so fast, and it, it, he's doing spinning shit. And you're just like, I don't know what's going on here. And then another <laughs> thing for future wrestlers that want to get into MMA is like, I started watching Max Holloway a lot because he's very like wide eyed and keeps his uh like his eyes on and pressure fighter, and uh, he's probably my favorite fighter now. But I would always like get in an exchange and just kind of like shell up, mm. close my eyes, and then uh, I, I would say the biggest transitions just I it's got to be striking, but I, I I feel like I'm pretty talented in that area and I've been working on it a lot. Um, I, I got a lot of good coaches and and couldn't be better off. Yeah, how's it feel? Like, how'd you take to jujitsu being off your back? I know a lot of wrestlers have a hard time being on their back and being comfortable there uh as far as my jujitsu i'm typically not on my back i'm a wrestler so <laughs> I put on our feet here at uh at immortal unlike some jujitsu gyms even at ground zero we start on our feet and we uh it, it's yeah, i mean i i typically am not on my back i got a solid triangle that's about the only thing i got from there but uh nice yeah that's awesome. So you said Max is probably your favorite fighter right now, but like, who's your goat? Who's your all-time goat? The best to ever do it. Shoot, I man, I want to give it to John Jones, but with all the controversy, you almost can't. I know, uh, man. That's a hard question, and I wish there was the like a regular. I gotta try to. I'm trying to pick a wrestler in my head so that I can give it to the wrestler. But I, I'd, I'd have to say GSP or uh, Silva. And it sucks because they could have fought each other. I, but I think there's, I think there's good opportunities for uh, the Kamaru Usman's and stuff to be considered to go. Like I, I, I think, think so too. I think Izzy's I mean, got a shot. You'd, you'd have to throw Khabib in there, right? Oh, Khabib. Yeah, Khabib. Yeah. That's my answer. That's, there you go. <laughs> I mean, he's undefeated. 29 and 0. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. Like, like it's always been Khabib versus John Jones for me. It's either one of those two, like you said, with John's recent stuff. And he definitely had the more controversial career in terms of close fights and in terms of the steroid yeah. allegations and stuff like that. So, yeah. Khabib was just so dominant. The GOAT conversation is always like, I, I just, I just hate it. I hate it for basketball. Obviously, I'm going to say it's LeBron because I'm from Ohio and I grew up watching LeBron. But, yeah. They never played each other, so I mean, John Jones can be. We're never gonna fight each other, so sure. I mean, pretty thick now, right there. But I was gonna say he looks like two hundred five now. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, the goat conversation's just—it's too—it's too hard to narrow it down. But I'd say Khabib, GSP, and Silva. But I always, I always like the the lighter dudes, man. They don't get enough nice. credit. Who, are you a big Cody Gar Garbrandt guy, being an Ohio boy? You, just, you said you were a TJ Dillashaw fan, actually. That surprised yeah, me. Yeah, dude. My dad <laughs> – like, so, dude, when they fought – or they did the Ultimate Fighter season, the the way they made that look for, for a young Lucas, like, they made – they screwed TJ and the cat. Like, they made him look so bad. And he's a good guy. I've met him before mm -hmm. uh, at the Ohio State Tournament my, my sophomore year, maybe. And uh, it was actually before he, he he was like ranked fifteenth and then went on the title run. It was, that was yep. cool. Uh, but yeah, dude, I just love TJ. His style mostly, just how he fights, that in and out style. And uh, but yeah, I'm a huge Cody Garbrandt fan. He was actually supposed to be on the card in Columbus two years ago. Oh man, that would have been huge. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. He trained in Pittsburgh for a long time. I had the pleasure of talking to him several times. I did so many interviews with him over the years and hung out yeah, with him a few dude. times. Man, I love I love Cody. Yeah, I would love to work with Cody. I mean, that's the uh, dude I would love to pick his brain. He's got the the boxing and uh, people don't know dude, he was a fantastic wrestler. He yeah, was he a, was. 
think of freshman state champ in Ohio Division One. Yeah, he was. So, hit. Yeah, him and his brother both were insane wrestlers in high school. And I, I like you said, yeah. he he fell in love with his hands so much that I think people forgot about the wrestling. But like, if you go back and watch that Dominic Cruz his title win, like you definitely see some of the wrestling one in that one. One of the best performances anybody's ever had. I mean, so clean. Dude's dancing around, taking him down with E. Like, it was incredible. And that Cody Garbrandt, I think, that the one that was out there that day was probably the best Bantamweight ever. Oh, dude, oh, I'm I'm so 100% hard. agreeing with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so hard. I mean, this sports, it's cutthroat, man. You don't you don't show up in your best day, and, and you, ha you have a bad day, but you got to train so that your worst day – you can still beat somebody. Yep. And that's yeah, and you're it. yeah, you're so right, man. But your worst day in this game is a real, real bad day. That's the problem. Yeah. Like it, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, for you, man, wh where do you put your goals right now? Like how do you start to structure your career? You know, you're at the very ground level of your MMA career, looking for that amateur yeah. debut this summer. How do you stop yourself from, you know, getting ahead of yourself? I'm sure you want to be Bellator UFC champ someday, but where, how are you kind of structuring that right now? So right now I'm just, uh, I'm finding a balance and everything, obviously. So uh, I want to graduate first. That's most important right now. Uh, and then uh, run with the MMA thing. Uh, my girlfriend, she got a good job. Uh here she's graduating with with me from WBU, and uh, we're going to be on a two year, six month rotational program <laughs> with her job. So we're going to be in a different city every six months. Mm. Obviously, home base is immortal, uh, but I'm going to have the opportunity to pick brains of people across the country, uh, and I think just learning as much as I can, just being a sponge, and. Uh, just learning as much as I can, man. I uh, I love this sport, regardless of where I am ten years from now with this sport. I I love this sport, and uh, I want to be a part of it. And I luckily got out of college wrestling with a little injuries, so like I I got a good opportunity. I think I'm I'm ready. I think I'm talented enough to go far in this sport. But if it doesn't happen. Uh, so be it but i i think i got a good shot no nah, that's awesome man i mean just talking to you you know we've like we said we texted back and forth and talked a little bit here and there on instagram and whatnot like it really does seem that your head's in the right spot you've got a good team around you. you've got all the right people around you. even if ethan hayes is a little crazy he's a good dude to have around i think good for you in your career cool. he's an oddball man i remember the first time i met ethan he was like yeah dude uh we're gonna roll at the dumpster with my buddy who's a tattoo artist. And I was like, bro, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> I don't know what the dumpster is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a mat in his garage. Dude, the tattoo artist turns out to be like the, one of the most famous tattoo people in all of uh, the area. And I'm like, dude, and then Ethan, dude, me and Ethan hit it off right away. I don't think that dude has an enemy in the world. Everybody's his friend. Except yeah. that he was in a cage against, but that he's still friends with them afterwards. Sure. I mean, Ethan is a is a great uh, mentor for me in the game. Uh, he's getting a little old now, so let's see, he's probably I think he's thirty. Yeah, I think he just turned thirty or is thirty at least. Yeah, oh, he's a little old. I hope he can still uh, still do the 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 fighting with me, help me train. But I don't know, man. The dude's old. <laughs> he probably probably can't keep up with those kids yeah, anymore. No, he can't. <laughs> no, I, I love Ethan, man. He's a he's a hell of a guy. We got a pretty playful relationship. He don't stop talking. Though. No, yeah, that's Ethan. Dude, our, dude. He's our, the drives best. To, our drives to Pittsburgh. Uh, the first time I I ever went with him, I was like, I don't think I said much. He was telling me, like, <laughs> just tell me all these stories about West Virginia, man. That dude is he's a great guy. Yeah, I always, he's my mentor. I always call him the the Obi to my Anakin. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> love it dude so i want to you know i'm not going to burn too much more of your time but i want to give you the chance you know you mentioned one of your sponsors earlier with the clothes but you got any other sponsors you want to shout out i'm gonna i'm gonna throw your instagram up here on the on the screen for everybody if you want to follow lucas on instagram it's right here yeah Super man Sleeper. so uh yeah uh <laughs> so I, I work for wrestling mindset 
which is a cool company. Um, uh, I get to talk to up and coming wrestlers and help them uh, with the sports psychology mindset uh, part of things. And th that's a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wrestling mindset's awesome. I got some guys, uh, Xander from Waynesburg that he, he just had a successful uh, career this year. And then I got uh, a couple other sponsors. I got gear, obviously. Um, great company out of Texas. And then um, another, yeah, great company out of Texas. Small company, but a thing for me is just, like, I want them to have, like, a, I'm not going to go with a company that doesn't have, like, moral integrity and stuff like that. And I really like the guys at gear. Nice. Um, and I have some connections in Texas and – that worked out for me and then breathe fume just fume it's i love this company killian also hooked me up with this one they have a lot of they have a big following they're actually uh big john mccarthy is a spokesperson for them he oh, does nice. it he, yeah he mentions them on his podcast with josh thompson often but this is a great alternative for smoking and uh tobacco use and stuff this is an awesome company got my dad to stop vaping um, nice it's an awesome healthy alternative it's essential oil pen uh with a like a q-tip in the middle basically it's, it, it, it's pretty cool so if you guys are interested in that code siebert for both of those uh but aside from that man immortal martial arts um every everybody at uh wvu uh, athletic department in general, my teammates, um, just everybody that's supported me, man. I'm excited to start this journey. Same dude. We're excited to have you, man. I'm glad we got the, uh, the talk in your Wi-Fi was crystal clear the entire time. This was perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, way better than last time. Oh, no doubt, man. But we'll do it again for sure. Like once we definitely get your, your fight booked, official, everything signed, sealed, and delivered, man, we'll get you on again. We we couldn't be more excited to have you inside our cage, brother. It's going to be a good time. Yep. I'm excited, man. I appreciate it.